Well, good evening, uh, Community Fellowship. It's so good to uh, be able to come to you over uh, technology tonight. Thankful for uh, video cameras and internet and uh, the ability to communicate God's Word uh, to you during this time. I want to thank all of you for your prayers and encouraging words uh, the last couple of days. Uh, I want you to know that I'm praying for you and uh, your family as well as our church family. And uh, we're trusting that uh, the Lord is going to be glorified in the midst of uh, the seeming uncertainty and, and unprecedented times that, that we're living in right now. Uh, specifically, a couple of things that you could pray for that would really help us is uh, first and foremost, pray uh, as we prepare to live stream our service on Sunday. Uh, I'd ask that you pray uh, all the technology works and that all the pieces come together and that uh, the internet and all the different things uh, work so that we're able to get the service out to all of our church family. Uh, for those of, uh, those of our church that maybe don't have the opportunity to do that, uh, we're trying to take steps to maybe connect them with another person or another church family to live stream the service uh, as well. So you can also be praying for that. Uh, the second thing I'd ask for you to pray for is to uh, just pray that we keep an outward focus uh, during this time. It would be really, really easy uh, amidst all the news and, and media and the things that are telling us to isolate and withdraw ourselves uh, it would be really easy to lose our kingdom focus. And uh, of course, we want to maintain balance and uh, we want to uh, certainly obey governmental authorities, uh, but you also want to obey, obey the great commission that God's given us to, to reach people with the gospel and to love and serve people. And so uh, just pray for our church family that we don't lose focus of what it is God has called us to do uh, during these days. Uh, tonight, I, I wanted to share just a quick passage uh, out of the book of Exodus. On Wednesday night, we've actually been going through a series on the life of Moses and uh, this next section of text that we would have actually shared with the church tonight uh, is a great, I think, passage of encouragement. And I wanted to share it with you uh, all tonight. And, and hopefully it's an encouragement to you from God's Word. Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 to 13. And the Bible reads, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And you know, this, this passage of Scripture deals with, with God sending Moses uh, before Pharaoh and, and ultimately to lead Israel out of Egypt. And, uh, you know, I was reading this passage today and, and just meditating on it, really wishing we were having church tonight, but uh, circumstances as they are, we, we just make adjustments accordingly. Uh, but I did want to share maybe a couple of thoughts really quick uh, out of this passage that would give you some encouragement in these days. Uh, and, and the first thing that, that came to mind as I read this was just the insufficiency of Moses. You know, as, as God comes to Moses and calls him and, and specifically says, I'm going, Moses, to send you to Pharaoh uh, to stand as a representative of me, as an ambassador of me, and I'm also going to use you to deliver that nation of Israel out of Egypt. Man, Moses uh, certainly, uh, I think, just like us many times, began to realize his own insignificance. You know, he even asked the Lord the question, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And, you know, there are probably a lot of Christians right now uh, that are probably feeling the same way. Who am I? And, and how could God use me in, in times like this and in days of affliction and, and persecution and, and uncertainty? How, how is it that God would use and could use somebody like me to make a difference? And so, you know, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 7 that Moses was, he was certainly a learned and educated man. Acts chapter 7 says that he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, in Acts 7 and verse 22, and that he was also mighty in words and deeds. And so, you know, from a secular standpoint, Moses was highly educated and, and well-spoken. He had a, a PhD, if you will, from Pharaoh University in Egypt. You know, but the Bible reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 uh, that God doesn't use many people that are mighty according to the flesh. As a matter of fact, it's, it's the opposite according to God's Word. Uh, and I'd like to share with you 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 29. The Bible says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, 
Not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in His presence. And you know, during these days, you may be asking yourself, how is it that I could be used of God? Who am I? I mean, really, who am I? Uh, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a, a minister. I'm not a miracle worker. I'm not a, a health care provider. Uh, you know, how, how is it that God could use me? And I, and I want you to just know that Moses had that same question. Uh, he began to realize his insufficiency. And, and that's a good place to be, to realize that we are insufficient uh, in God's eyes. Uh, that if God doesn't do the work Himself, that, that nothing will be done that's profitable or of eternal significance. You know, David asked that same question, who am I, when, when Saul was going to give uh, David his daughter uh, as, as a wife, the king was giving him a daughter. David said, Who am I and what is my life or my father's family in Israel that I should be son-in-law to the king? And, and his point was he didn't deserve to be royalty. And, and he just realized his, his insignificance as just a, a shepherd boy. And, 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 and he just paints for us a, a picture of humility and insufficiency. Later on in 1 Chronicles 17, when, when David desired in his heart to build a house for God, uh, God answered David through the prophet Nathan. And he said, you know, David, you're not going to get to do that, but your seed after you, uh, your son, I'm going to allow to build me a house. Ultimately, what would be the temple? And Solomon would be the one that would build that. And, and when David got that news from God, he said in 1 Corinthians 17 and verse 16, David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is mine house? that thou hast brought me hitherto." Again, David was just humble, and he realized his insufficiency. He, wa he wanted to do something for God, to please God, and he realized that only God could do it in spite of him. And again, later on in 1 Chronicles, as they began preparation for the temple, David led the, the nation of Israel in, in taking an offering uh, to, to get the materials to build that temple. And it says in 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 14, But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thy own have we given thee. And, and David just realized, God, everything that we have is yours. Everything that, that we own is really yours, and you just allowed us to be stewards of it. And so, uh, you know, our, our insufficiency, as, as God's Word teaches us, is a reality. And, and it always should be a reality in God's economy. In other words, our insufficiency makes us rely on God's power and God's sufficiency, which really is the last point I wanted to share with you tonight. And in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 12, after Moses asked the Lord, Who am I, God, that, that you would even send me to Pharaoh? Well, the Lord answers him. And in verse 12, the Bible says, And he, the Lord, said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And so God gives Moses an answer for his own personal insufficiency. And the answer was God's sufficiency. God reminded him, hey Moses, you're not doing this alone. You're not doing this in the power of your flesh. I'm the one that's going to be with you. And actually, I'm the one that's going to do the work through you. Uh, Moses had forgot back in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 that the Lord had said, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I mean, God Himself said that He had come down to deliver the nation of Israel from the Egyptians. And so as God is trying to send Moses to be a representative and an ambassador, you know, Moses thought that that was his job, that that, that was his responsibility. And the truth is, it was God's responsibility. God's power and God's sufficiency was going to work through Moses' life. And I think that's the same thing that we struggle with. We struggle with our own personal insufficiency, but the beautiful thing is God is sufficient for all things. And, and He even assures Moses, certainly I will be with thee. Certainly I will be with thee. There's another man in the Bible named Gideon. Many of you know the story of Gideon. 
God raised him up to also deliver Israel out of oppression, out of bondage many years later. And in Judges chapter 6, when the Lord comes and calls him to, to serve and, and to be used of God to deliver other people, just like Moses, Gideon had his own reservations and, and Gideon realized his own insufficiency. The Bible says in Judges 6 verses 15 and 16, this is Gideon speaking, he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I serve Israel? Shall I save Israel? Excuse me. Behold, my father is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And, and I just want to encourage us, church, tonight. Listen, God has promised that He will be with us. It's His power through which we operate in this world. It's His power that is sufficient right now in, in times like this to be used of God to minister to other people. And I just in closing want to remind you of Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20. I hope it gives comfort to your heart tonight. Uh, verse 18 says this, Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And of course Jesus is speaking this to the, the disciples. This is after the resurrection, right before His ascension in Acts chapter 1. And He just reminds us that He has all power in heaven and earth. All power in heaven and earth. And then He commissions those disciples and He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. And so the power and sufficiency of the Lord, it, it is a certainty. Just like the Lord told Moses, listen, certainly I will be with you. And I'm going to go with you as you go before Pharaoh. And I'm going to go with you as you deliver Israel from the affliction and the bondage that they're in. Listen, guys, God has promised His presence to us. He says He's going to be with us always and forever, even to the end of the world. And His power is all-powerful in heaven and earth. And God wants to use you in these days to make a difference for His glory's sake. And so I'm praying for you uh, that God would open the doors of opportunity uh, to minister to those around you, your neighbors, your family. And I'm praying that the gospel would go forth as, as we, by the grace of God, seek to be used of God to see other people delivered from their affliction and their bondage into spiritual victory. Church, I love you very, very much. We'll have more announcements and news coming very, very soon via email. God bless you, and I love you very much.